Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Holman, for that song. It is important that we learn to lean on Jesus. Amen? Amen. There is no power in self, but there is enormous power in death to self in learning to lean on Jesus. More power than we can ever imagine, as the words of his song indi indicates. This morning, just briefly, uh, we want to study the Lord's word in context with this concept, the power of one. The power of one. As Wesley has just uh, read to us from the Lord's holy word, through one individual, the created being of Jesus, salvation came into this world. But if we back it up just a little bit chronologically, the first created being was not Adam. <laughs> the first created being was, well, someone we don't know, perhaps, but it was certainly Lucifer was long before Adam. And we want to share in this context of the power of one, what does influence really mean? What does living a life of influence mean to you and me as we walk out of this sanctuary today? Is it action or is it just attitude? We know that we are all called to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We know this. So in this context, let's reflect a little bit about the power of one starting with Lucifer. That's where the offense started. And then the power of Adam and Eve. That's where the offense perpetuated throughout all humanity. And then the power of Jesus Christ that's where salvation and transformation and individual conversion comes. So these three individuals, only one is completely divine, through the power of their influence, enormous storms, spiritual storms, wicked storms came. So in Romans, Paul is trying to tell us amazing balances are being tipped, not just little few centimeters here, a few centimeters there, amazing shifts in spiritual power in the universe occur because of one man's disobedience. Of course, it took a husband and wife to do it, but the point is through the early human existence on this planet, there was a huge shift in spiritual power. But, as we know from our lesson study a few weeks ago, God is always ahead of the game. He always has another plan. And so through Jesus Christ, his perfect life, his death, and most importantly, his resurrection, it took the Father to raise Jesus. The resurrection then completely changed the spiritual power balance backwards into checkmate. The game was finished. This earthly kingdom of the devil, of Lucifer, was now destroyed. And victory was given to us as a free gift as in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. As in Adam, all die. Even so, even so, God the Father was still perfect in his fairness to the universe of free choice. And he allowed the death, the perfect death, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to atone for all sin forever. It's amazing. So in Christ, we, humanity, become alive. So you think of the balance of power here on this earth. We always think of this as forms of economy, army, many dollars, many soldiers, many weapons. It's all about force and leverage. 
But that's not the game that Jesus Christ is calling us to this morning. A third passage I commend for you to study in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Not considering our sins against us. And in verse 20, we are now ambassadors for Jesus Christ. As though God was speaking through us to the world, reconciling the world to himself. And of course, we all know verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us. The Father made Jesus to be sin for you and me. Now, it'll take an eternity to quite grasp the magnitude of that love the Father has for humanity, you and me this morning, in that he made his son Jesus to be the sin sacrifice for us. The power of that one life, the life of Jesus Christ, that transformed everything for this planet for humanity and signaled the sealing defeat of Lucifer. It was finished then. It was finished then. So, God's plan for you and me is based on influence to be ambassadors for Jesus. Let's just pray here for a moment. Dear Heavenly Father, as we reflect on your holy word, and as we briefly share words, we ask that these words will be from your throne of grace this morning. Each one of us is searching for a blessing, for guidance, for assurance, for hope. Give us the signs and the signals that you are with us, you are leading us, and show us the way that our influence will lead others to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So the laws of physics which God created, anytime you think of power, you have to think of the lever and leverage, that's power. Leverage moves, moves objects that have power, mass, and force. Human power, again, a dichotomy. Earthly thinking, human power is based on position, education, heritage, money, many earthly matters. No spiritual power within any of those things that I just mentioned, if they are the singular focus of our lives. Godly power is the power of the Holy Spirit living within us, the power of our influence, the power of our ambassadorship for ourself, for our church, God forbid, for Jesus Christ, to signal the love that God has for another person. I would even go so far as not to signal the love that God has for me, for you to watch as a third party, because that's a little bit of a distracting, self-centered story. The ambassadorship that I'm called to is to show others the power of God to, yes, transform my life so that I will then show that that other person is so very important to the Father. And that takes a tremendous change in the human mentality. God did not send Jesus to die for me so that I can then say, I love you, please help me. No, he sent Jesus to die for me so that I will die to self and be a Jesus to someone else. Yes, in the meantime, he gives me all I need, but that is not the end. That is a means to the end, which is to be ambassadors, to be a Jesus for someone else, to draw them to the love of the Father. So this personal power in the Bible there are many, many passages that call us to perseverance as ambassadors, to recover from setbacks, to overcome difficulties, whether they're from our own actions from a sinful life or whether they're from others' actions in their sinful life on us. The Lord says, 
you are my child. Don't doubt me. Don't doubt me. If I send you to be an ambassador for me, don't doubt me. If you are an ambassador for yourself, for your family, for your education, for even your own institution or organization, you have many reasons to be doubtful. But if you are an ambassador for Jesus Christ, you don't need to ever doubt that God's power through the Holy Spirit will work through you. Now we think of ambassadors in this day and age as uh, representatives for nations. It's a high honor, sometimes based on uh, cronyism. But these ambassadors are worthy of our respect because they represent collections of people whom God loves. Regardless of the nation, it doesn't matter. And these ambassadors do have the backing of the nations for which they represent. So can you be in, imagine being a representative of the UK to Argentina? Actually, that's not a good choice because uh, they're not on good terms. <laughs> they still hold a grudge. But can you be, imagine being an ambassador for Brazil to Russia? Brick, they're really with each other. Can you imagine being an ambassador for the United States to France? Or an ambassador for the United States to Syria? Or Israel? Each one has a different implication. But imagine what you can expect if you think you're in personal danger. You have the backing of a very powerful nation behind you. Doesn't always mean you're safe. We hear of ambassadors losing their life here and there, and they're surrounded by guards. So the earthly power game is, is not fun. But imagine if you're an ambassador for Jesus Christ in a situation which maybe you're not so sure he led you into, but let's say he did. Are you alone? Are you, are you isolated? Do you have resources to call on? Yes. The only thing that will take you down as an ambassador for Jesus Christ is doubt. God hates doubt in our personal lives and it comes to him. It is a horrific false God that will destroy. As long as we do not allow doubt to come into our lives, we have amazing personal power, spiritual power, not based on us, not based on self, but based on the victory that Jesus has already obtained over Lucifer and one-third of the original heavenly angels. The battle's already been decided. It's like you're being an ambassador to a war zone where it's already been finished. It's just the mopping up operations. For the last 2,000 years, it's kind of a funny mopping up operation, but that's what it is. The salvation for humanity, those who put their hearts and lives in the hands of the Father, through faith in the anointing of Jesus Christ's death for us, it's already finished. It's just now, because of God's infinite compassion, he says, well, the rest of humanity that don't know about me, I'm going to delay the second coming just a little more so I can claim more of them because they're so precious to me. That is the mentality of an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Not what you can do for me, but what you can do through me for others. If that is our focus, and we can gain victory over doubt, there is absolutely nothing that can stop you. Nothing. Now the battle, the, uh, the Bible's full of allegories to help us understand this power. And I'm gonna just borrow my favorite color. So, this is what an ambassador 
for Jesus Christ looks like. And that's why every one of you are being called this morning to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ. There is no power on this earth that can stop you. There are no circumstances that can blunt the power of God's love channeled through your life. If this is what people see, when they see your face. There are other alternatives, of course. We can doubt that God can do this kind of love through me. We can uh, question and we can say, well, I don't know, the, the challenges are too great. The, the ideas that God has put into my mind are beyond anything I know how to accomplish, then you're defeated. But as we know from God's holy word, the weak can say they're strong, and the poor can say they're rich. John 1.12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. The Holy Word. They use that word, <laughs> power. Power to become the sons of God. You are not just an ambassador for Jesus as part of some church organization. You are part of God's family. You are family that has become an ambassador. Romans chapter 8. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. That is a contingency. Yes, the Holy Spirit. It is not something where self decides to rise up over the daily problems. And I will be more determined. No, no, no. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, then they are the sons of God. Verse 14 and verse 19, for the earnest expectation of humanity is for the manifestation of the sons of God, you and me. Our ambassadorship, leadership is lying in the streets waiting to be picked up by the ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Galatians 4, 6, because ye are sons, it's no longer an if, you are sons and daughters. Because you are sons and daughters of God, he has then given you the Holy Spirit in your hearts. And in Philippians 2, 15, sons of God, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, you can shine as the light of the world. Do we want to be that light? Or do we want to just live ordinary lives? It's such a stark contrast. Do we just want to be part of an Anderson family? Of course, that's not very attractive to Chinese people, but, or do we want to be part of the Chen family? Yeah, that's, that's exciting. Or that's not so great. Or do we want to be sons and daughters of God that do not recognize limitations, that do not allow human obstacles to get in their way, but always show up holding that flower so people see you as ambassadors of a loving, loving, merciful, kind God. Because God's way is not, you know, we hear a lot in the Bible about armies, and that's good. But in the context of this message this morning, it's a one-on-one -on -one battle. If we can settle the battle within our heart, that's just the beginning. Hopefully it's not the end. That's just the beginning. Settle the battle within your heart. You are a son and daughter of God. And then take up that leadership that's lying in the streets. 
become an ambassador for Jesus Christ, and move forward to those who are desperately looking for your manifestation. Love conquers all. A spirit-filled Christian life has the power of God's love and mercy flowing through them. Nothing can stop you. Doubt, kill it every morning. Dying to self every day means torture that doubt, destroy that doubt. And know, as we've said before, I know God is with me. I know God is with me. And if we doubt him, then he won't be with us. So what is the conclusion of the matter? What can we do for others? It's not what can Jesus and the Father do for me. What can the Father and Jesus do through me? And in that setting, with that attitude, the power of God's love within me will be just as remarkable on this earth as the power of Lucifer, Adam, and Jesus. Both, all three, had tremendous shifts in power based on their choices. If we make those choices that the Lord wants us to, others will be saved and will be, therefore, co-workers with the Father in why he's delaying his return in the first place, to save others. That's the real reason, the mopping up operation. Do we want to be part of that rescue, that rescue effort? Or do we want to sit on the side and, well, the Lord's not doing much for me today? Third parties will look onto that video and not be too happy with us. No, we want to be ambassadors for Jesus involved in this amazing rescue operation that is the manifestation of our sonship, of our ambassadorship. So, number one, I am an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Number two, I can do all things. Not I self, no, no, self dead. Number three, if I put my effort into it and then turn back, I'm not fit for the kingdom of heaven. This personal stakes are pretty high. This is not some armchair quarterback concept. Jesus doesn't do anything that way, does he? You're my son and my daughter. Move. Move forward. Don't doubt me. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. If you put your shoulder to the plow and turn back, you are not fit for the kingdom. Three or four texts weave together in one message. The moment is now. Penang is a center of Southeast Asia, and we are all here this morning, and God is calling each one of us this morning to different callings, but to one purpose. Don't do what you can. Do what you can't without me, because if you do it with me, then the power of my love working through you will not just transform your life, but the lives of others. And then you will see my face, and you will hear me say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That should be our eternal hope. May God bless each one of your very, very precious lives.